Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? Actually, let me answer that one for you. If you work for Cloudflare's network operations team, I suspect you are doing very badly indeed. So I just want to say, hey, hang in there. Everybody has bad days and thanks for all the awesome stuff you do. And for many of the rest of you, your day has quite possibly involved that fun little roller coaster of emotions that starts with you getting pinged that something is broken. That cold, sick feeling as you ascertain that something is indeed broken. In fact, it's extremely broken. A few minutes of frantic troubleshooting as you try to figure out what broke, and more importantly, if it was your fault. And then that sort of weird combination of relief and schadenfreude when you figure out that no, it's not your fault, and there is probably nothing you can do except ping your clients, let them know that the internet is broken today, and get on with whatever it was you were doing. See, around noon today, Cloudflare had a major outage. Cloudflare is a big deal. Cloudflare provides traffic management, attack prevention, DNS caching, basically a whole range of really quite useful services that filter out lots of the nasty traffic, which is a fact of life on the modern internet. Which means folks like me can get on with building and running websites instead of spending our time dealing with denial of service attacks. Problem is, Cloudflare does this incredibly well and has a very generous free plan, which means an awful lot of websites take advantage of their services. So when Cloudflare has a problem, it takes out a substantial part of the World Wide Web. The first indication I had today that anything was amiss was an SMS alert at 1137. Yeah, I know, old school, but SMS still works when you don't have internet. So if you want to be notified when there's a problem with the internet, SMS is a pretty good way to do it. So I get an SMS ping that one of the sites I run was down. That alert came from a service called Uptime Robot, which I use to monitor most of the websites I look after. So step one, confirm that the site is actually down. Yep, it's down. At this point, I didn't actually notice that the red X was in the wrong place. So I assumed something on our Azure stack had fallen over. And I went to log into Uptime Robot to see if anything else was affected. And that's when it gets interesting. See, Uptime Robot also runs on Cloudflare. And Cloudflare's outage meant that Uptime Robot was extremely broken, to the point that I couldn't actually log in for a few minutes. And when I did, all I got was various beautifully designed toaster notifications informing me that various things were broken, unavailable, and had gone wrong. Okay, keep calm, carry on, work the problem. Let's see if there's anything on downdetector.com, another site that's useful for seeing how widespread a problem is, except turns out downdetector.com uses Cloudflare and so is also temporarily unavailable. How about the wonderfully named downforeveryoneorjustme.com? Yep, same problem. So I take a look on Blue Sky. There's a bunch of folks posting about a Cloudflare outage, so it looks like whatever's going on, it's affecting quite a lot of people. Uh, just for science, I open up the social network formerly known as Twitter for the first time in a few months to see if there's any useful information posted there. Yeah, that's not helpful either. I guess they are also relying on Cloudflare. Now, this is where this kind of thing gets interesting. In the immediate short term, there's nothing I can do except wait and hope Cloudflare fixes whatever is causing the problem. But there's always that question in the back of my head. What if Cloudflare doesn't come back? See, the modern internet is weird. The fundamental protocols that make it all work are transparent, open, and aren't coupled to any single provider. You take a domain like dylanbeatty.net. At the bottom of the stack is the domain registration itself, the bit of data somewhere in somebody's database which says that domain belongs to Dylan, and if you want to find out more, here are the name servers you should talk to. So you, or rather your browser or your operating system, contacts one of those name servers and says, hey, I want to look at dylanbt.net. And the name server says, cool, send your request to this address. And it gives you the numeric IP address of the server that's actually running dylanbt.net or theregister.com or uptimerobot.com. And then your browser connects to that address and it says, hey, I'm a browser. Can I have the homepage for this website, please? And you get back a chunk of HTML and CSS and JavaScript and your browser puts all that together and voila, you got a web page. All of those requests and responses take place using open protocols like DNS and HTTP, designed to allow different devices, networks, companies, and platforms to interoperate. In theory, your domain registrar could be one company, your DNS provider might be somebody else, the server that actually hosts your website is somebody else entirely. It's a nice idea, and in theory, it works very well indeed. I have been managing networks and running websites since long before anybody was talking about the cloud. And when you get everything configured right, it does work very well. The problem is duplication. 
it's way more efficient to put a hundred websites on one big server than it is to run a hundred servers. It is way more efficient to put a hundred servers in one big data center than it is to run a hundred little data centers. There's that old saying about putting all your eggs in one basket, but it turns out baskets are actually quite expensive. And there aren't many folks out there who know how to build and maintain baskets. So if you do find yourself responsible for some eggs, you're better off finding someone who has a really, really good basket and asking them to look after your eggs for you. And they'll probably do it for free because they make more money selling information about the state of the global egg economy than it costs them to look after everybody's eggs. My own site, dylanbeatty.net, it's hosted on GitHub pages, but it uses Cloudflare for DNS, traffic filtering, caching. I've got a couple of little cloud functions running on Cloudflare workers. In order to do this, I have enabled a Cloudflare feature which proxies all incoming traffic through their servers. So when you're browsing dylanbeatty.net, all your requests are actually going from your browser to Cloudflare, which has a little look at them to make sure they're all right, and maybe notes down a few interesting details about what sort of requests they are, and then forwards them onto GitHub pages, which hosts the actual content. So when Cloudflare started having issues earlier, dylanbeatty.net started returning a Cloudflare error page, which is stupid because the site itself is a few megabytes of static HTML, which in internet terms is only slightly more complicated than banging two rocks together. But putting it behind Cloudflare makes it easier to analyze the site traffic and see how many requests are coming from AI bots and those kinds of things. Of course, the fix is trivial. I log into Cloudflare and I turn off traffic proxying. Easy, except Cloudflare's down. It's not completely down, but their login page has a capture on it. One of those little prove that you're human things. And I'm assuming that the back end for that capture is hosted on one of the bits of Cloudflare, which isn't working right now, because all I get is a little message saying, let us know you're human. I guess I could send them a postcard. Now, on a day like this, it's really easy to get frustrated. My sites are down, it's not my fault, somebody else screwed up, and when you've spent most of your adult life being the person who gets it in the neck every time the website goes down, that's a little hard to rationalize. It's the same when Azure has an issue, or AWS, or Gmail, or any of the massive cloud platforms that run so much of the modern internet. But then I force myself to think back to the days of hosting everything on premise, on physical hardware, and the number of incidents we had every year because of denial of service attacks, bot storms, hardware failures, power outages, connectivity problems. And I have to admit, as much as I don't like to, that Cloudflare and Azure is a way more reliable platform than anything I and the teams I've worked with could ever have put together. It's just when they go down, they go down hard, and they tend to take a whole lot of things down with them. As of right now, Cloudflare's outage has taken out Stack Overflow, Twitter, ChatGPT, Claude AI, DoorDash, Grindr, Uber, Canva, but it's also taken out Suno AI and Truth Social, so hey, we all get a little break from AI slop music and fascist politics, which is nice. I'm sure Cloudflare will be back soon. And if it's not, I guess I can always sign into my domain registrar and ask them to point DylanBD.net at somebody else's name servers and wait 24 hours for the internet to notice and, and it'll be back. But it does highlight the risk of consolidation. The internet and the web are built on powerful, open, public protocols. They weren't supposed to be used so that half a dozen trillion dollar corporations could talk to each other while the rest of us stand outside repeatedly having to prove that we're human. I think Cloudflare provides a fantastic service, and my heart goes out to all the engineers trying to figure out what happened today and get it all back up and running. I just, I wish there were a few more companies out there providing the same service at the same level so that we could, you know, spread things around a bit. Folks, I hope you found that interesting. And Cloudflare, I hope you get things back to normal soon. You uh, all look after each other out there. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.